Hey guys, my name is Ben and welcome back to episode 4 of your Bucket Minigame Tutorials. Uh, just to address this quickly before we start, these come out, normally they will come out every every third day. So, Monday, for example, it might not be, like, I don't know what this, today it's going to come out on Monday. So it'll be Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, Tuesday, whatever. Uh, every, every three days, normally. Um, if it doesn't, then there'll be some sort of reason, but other than that, it will come out every other three days. The reason it hasn't for the past, like, week or so is because I've been on holiday. If you follow my Twitter account, which is at the BC Bros, follow that now, um, and you'll get any updates on, you know, where I am. And that's why there hasn't been any videos for the past week other than the vlogs. So now that's out of the way, today we're going to be getting into, uh, location utilities. We're just going to set up the location utilities class. And what this is going to do is it's going to handle, my phone, it's going to handle, um, how... Uh, the player is moved around the map, and so we're just going to set up a few kind of um, generic, generic teleport uh, methods in there. So if we hit our oh god, things are popping up all over the screen. Right, so if we hit our new class button and we type in location uh, util 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 it is like so. Okay, so in this class we're going to have um, things such as like teleport player to. Um, Teleport player to uh, spawn, teleport player to lobby, and all of that kind of stuff. So, uh, in this class, we're going to, first of all, we want to define a spawn location. Um, so, we'll do that now, I guess. Uh, so, we're going to make a private static location, and it's going to be our spawn location. And it's going to be equal to a new location. Now, obviously, I haven't actually set up the map yet. Uh, and we're not going to do that until it's basically all done. So for now, we're just going to say it's going to be in the bucket dot get world, uh, and we'll call it just just world or lobby. Let's call it lobby. Uh, the x we'll set as zero, y can be sixty four, and then z can be zero. So now we just have our spawn location. So this is where the player is going to spawn, like so. Um, obviously change this to whatever you want for that suits your mini game. Uh, and wrapping my wraps doesn't have to wrap. So, we now go to make about a few methods um, to to do stuff. So when the player joins, we're going to want to teleport them to the spawn. So if we make a method called public static void, uh, so it's a public static, it can just be accessed, so you can type location utilities dot and then teleport to spawn. So we're going to type call this teleport to spawn. And then in its parameters, we're going to take a player. Now the player is going to be the player that is being teleported to spawn. And import player from org bucket into do player, and then now we can say player dot teleport to the spawn location, like so, because we have the spawn location up here which we've defined, which is going to be a new location in a world with certain coordinates as to where we want the spawn location to be. Uh, I'm going to change to 0 0.5 because we want them to be centered on the on the middle of the block. So if you didn't know that, uh, that's going to put them in a corner of the block. If we put 0 0.5, it's going to center them in the middle of the block for the uh, the x and z. Okay, so now we have that teleport to spawn method. If we wanted to teleport all of the players to spawn, we're going to set make a new method. We're going to say public static void teleport all to spawn. And this time, we're going to loop through all the players on the server. So player p bucket dot get online players. And in here, we're going to type teleport to spawn. Uh, not teleport to spawn. Teleport to spawn and then p. So we can actually utilize this method within this method. So we don't have to type player teleport location to spawn. We can just say teleport to spawn player, like so. So now what we have to do is we're going to um, make a method which teleports a player to their spawn point depending on their team. Now in here we have our team class. And what else we want to make inside of our team class is a spawn location method. Um, so if we just make a... Uh, and actually, we can't do that yet because what if... Actually, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Right, so we're going to make a public location and it's going to get spawn. So it's going to get the spawn point and import, import location from org.bucket.location. So it's going to return the spawn point for where this team is going to spawn. And obviously, um, that's different for each each uh, player. So when we define each team, which we do in game, we say new team red, new team blue, uh, we also want to put in a location for where they're going to spawn. So after team name, we're going to type location uh, spawn, like so. And up here, we want to make a local variable, which is going to be a private location spawn. And in here, 
we can type this dot spawn equals spawn. Right, so now obviously we have errors in our game class now because these don't have locations. Uh, but for now, in our public location get spawn, we can just return the spawn point. Uh, return the spawn point for each player, uh, for each each team, because now we have set a spawn point for each team that we create. Okay, so now we need to make a location, uh, and obviously we don't have a map set up yet, so we can just say new location, uh, bucket dot get world, uh, and we'll just call it uh, world, and the x, y, and z can be 0, 64, or the, let's make it like 20, 64, 20, uh, and this obviously we don't know what these are yet because we haven't made our uh, our map yet, which we will eventually do. Uh, but not this tutorial, not not soon, or whenever we finish all the programming, and then obviously just copy this down, and so we now have locations in our constructors for the teams, and let's change this to something like 40. There we go. So now we've got that done in our uh, location utilities, we can make a method called public uh, static void teleport to game player player, and then we need what team they're on. So uh, in here just type team, team, like so. Uh, and import team from com.bucket.handlers.team or whatever your thing is. And now we can fix that. And we can say player.teleport to team.getspawn. So that's going to teleport them to their team's spawn point like so. So that is all well and good. Um, so now we need to go into our listeners and our player listeners and when a player joins we're going to say event dot um, get player and then dot teleport to or actually no, we want to do this at all. We want to say location location utilities dot teleport to spawn event dot get player like so so when a player joins they're going to get teleported to spawn every single time um and obviously we also want to make it so that when the um they, they cannot join the game if the uh game has already started so i guess if we do that now so we're going to make another uh listener in our player package for listeners, and we're going to call this async uh, player pre login. So this this gets called as a player is trying to connect, and this obviously this extends our mini game listener, and then we need to add our constructor like so. So now if we add an at event handler, and we say public uh, void player pre Player, let's just say player player, player pre login like uh, login lo I can type and then async async uh, player pre login events event I put logic didn't I fantastic change that to login and then obviously hover over this and we change this as well hover over this and rename the compilation unit to player pre login. So that just refractors our thing and renames it to player pre-login. So now this gets called when a player is trying to connect to the server. And we want to check if the game has started. And as we have made this method, um, we haven't actually made it yet. We're going to make a method right now. In our game class, if we make a private static boolean has started. And currently it equals false because when the server gets enabled, you know, it hasn't started. As soon as it gets started, though, the game has started. So has started equals true. And then when the game stops has started equals false and now to get this we need to make a method so we're going to say public static boolean has started and this just returns has started like so so now in our async player player pre-login we want to say if the game has started then we're going to disallow them from joining so event dot disallow uh, and then result dot kick uh, underscore other because we're kicking them for some other reason and kick underscore other and import that from async player pre login event not player pre login event or player login event and the message is going to be chat color dot red and the game 
has already started. Something like that. And obviously spell chat color right and import everything. Control shift O. So now the player is not going to be able to join um, when they try and log in. And we need to add this into our register listeners class. We actually need to add everything into the register listeners class. So if we just take this and we copy this down a couple of times. So player join, player quit, and async. A sync. I can spell player pre login like so. So now we've just added in our um our new listeners that we've created over the past couple of tutorials. So uh, in our player join, we now have this so it teleports into spawn. And finally, in our game class, once they've been added into a team, uh, we want to now loop through all the players. So we've now looped through all the players this one time. And we want to do it again, and we want to teleport them to their team once their team has been selected. So we've looked through the players, we've said, da -da -da, we'll get the team, and we've added the player into it. So now, in the same thing, we want to teleport the player to the game. So we're going to say location utilities dot teleport to game player, and the team is, da -da 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 -da, it's going to be team dot get all teams dot get i like so so it's exactly the same team here as here um but but yeah and now I look at this actually I haven't incremented i so after this we need to say i plus plus like so um I think I put that as an annotation on one of the other tutorials actually but yeah put i plus plus somewhere in here preferably at the end so it's incrementing i and we don't need to actually say team get team. We can just say teams. Uh, so if you actually look at that, we can say team dot get all teams dot get i dot add player. What we were doing before was unnecessary. Uh, and then we can say location utilities dot teleport to game player and then team dot get all teams i. So that's all we're going to be doing for today. Um, so yeah, check back in the next tutorial for more. You can go subscribe to my YouTube if you haven't already. Follow my Twitter and yeah, I'll see you guys next time.